So I'm here at The World Transformed with Anne Pettifor, the director of Prime Economics, and she's just done a wonderful talk, been on a wonderful panel, and um, just picking up on something that you mentioned earlier about the potential limits of uh, Corbyn government, or rather the problems that it can encounter, what do you think to people who are talking about the potential for a repeat of an IMF crisis, as has been a scare story that's been spun in the right-wing media to some extent? I think what we have to recognise is that um, we're in a very different world than, than back in the 1970s. And we're in a world where actually the IMF is arguing that governments should spend, that they should invest, and that they should end austerity. And not just the IMF, the OECD, and other big institutions. So it's a very different world. In a, a funny way, those guys want a Labour government and want a Labour government to do something to restore the economy. The, the economies have not recovered since the crisis. They're still below the, the rate of economic activity that existed before the crisis. Incomes are 6% or even more than that below what they were before the crisis. And that is depressing economic activity, not just in Britain but around the world. So I, I don't feel that there's the same threat from the IMF. And also we are an autonomous country to a degree. We have got our our own central bank and our own institutions and our institutions are good and sound and um, public institutions taxpayer backed institutions so I don't feel there's going to be that sort of threat there may be a threat of capital flight but again capital is desperate for somewhere to invest that's going to be safe and sound and generate income and activity and so in many ways they're waiting for a government that's willing to invest and spend. So how do we combat that threat of a capital flight? I don't, I don't think we can. I think we have to present an economic strategy that people think is viable. And I think lots, I mean, I have to say that John is often described as a Marxist, but I think John is being very kind of mainstream with his economics and very sensible and, and very straightforward. And I don't think that there's anything really to, to worry, uh, to fr frighten the horses. That's not to say that there won't be. I, I'm not saying that. But I do think that these markets need a sound government. I remember working on... Uh, Russia, when Russia defaulted on its debts, and everybody said this would be the end of the world, and, and no, the markets were glad that the debts had been cleared, and they all piled back in there because what they want is sound opportunities to invest and to generate income, and, and that's what a Labour government has to give them. So you um, focus in your strategy a lot on the value of wages, the fact that we have to um, increase the minimum wage and that has like a positive multiplier effect by increasing demand because there's this enormous um, um, sort of dearth of demand yes. in the global economy. And, yes. right, and we're completely agreed on that. But um, isn't there an extent to which that kind of um, increase in wages can drive automation that sort of puts that deal um, somewhat on the rocks? Yes, well the point is how much work can actually be automated. You know, there's a great deal of work that cannot be done by machines. Caring for old people with Alzheimer's, creating works of art, um, uh, you know, teaching children, teaching skills to, to, to students, you know, not, not, this cannot be done by robots, basically. But I have a problem with all this talk of robots and robotic and AI and so on. It assumes that there are limitless amounts of steel, minerals, uh, rare earths. You know, the rare earths that we use in our iPhones and that are going to be needed to drive these robots come from the Congo. And there's finite amounts of those rare earths. And even now, taking them out, they're conflict minerals, they're called, is really expensive and hard. But they come to an end. There's only a certain amount of that. So I think this is delusional about how we can all become a robotic culture when actually we're always going to need human labor.